Douglas on behalf of the people of Timmins James Bay uh, who've put their trust in me to work on the issues of legislation that's before the House. I'm going to speak today on Bill C-55, uh, why the New Democrat Party is supporting this bill, what works about this bill, but also the issues that we need to uh, look at the, the prism that needs to be uh, applied here, Mr. Speaker, in terms of how the legislation was crafted and what it was response to and how it ties into two other key pieces of legislation uh, that this House has been asked to deal with. One is Bill C-30 and the other is Bill C-12 because within each of the bills there are key issues that reflect on the ability uh, of this government to move forward with legislation and on how legislation is actually brought forward. Mr. Speaker, I think what's striking already off the top of Bill C-55, it's a very narrow bill. It's simply addressing Section uh, 184.4 of the Criminal Code that the Supreme Court struck down. What we find, Mr. Speaker, is that legislation that's limited is usually more effective than legislation that is broad because legislation is a very brunt uh, tool. Uh, unfortunately, we see that the government likes to throw in all manner of legislation without thinking of the consequences often, uh, without, with very little regard for the consequences. So we've seen one omnibus bill after another bill brought before the House with act, without the proper review, without the proper understanding of how that relates to basic issues like charter rights. So now C-55, I would like to uh, say I think the government is doing the right thing here in terms of having very narrowly defined legislation that addresses a major problem. Uh, I would like to think that they had thought this up on their own, that this was how they were going to start to deal with criminal matters and criminal uh, uh, reform of the criminal justice system, but that's not really what's happened here, Mr. Speaker. They are responding to the fact that the Supreme Court struck down one 4.4 of the Criminal Code and gave them a deadline, April 13th, which is only two weeks away, uh, in order to address the problem. Now, I'm going to speak a little bit about C-55 and then explain how the implications of the Supreme Court legislation tie in to Bill C-30 and to Bill C-12. Uh, under 184.4, the Supreme Court ruled uh, in R versus Say that the De desire by the police to gather a wiretap, an uh, a warrantless wiretap, to secure the safety of an individual was, that is a correct step to take. We have within Canadian jurisprudence the ability of law officers, if a life's at stake, uh, to go in to get the evidence to secure a life. That is a, a long-standing practice within the Canadian law system. However, the problem with 184.4 was that there was no accountability mechanisms. And what I find is very interesting about the Supreme Court decision, Mr. Speaker, is that it says that even in the case of criminal activities, because what we were dealing with in this case was a kidnap, and that's a very horrendous uh, attack against a, a citizen. And, but even within the issue of a kidnap, there still remain basic charter rights that have to be balanced, because the Supreme Court looks at the larger view and recognizes the fact that you cannot use the specter of criminality to undermine the basic rights of citizens in this country. Now, this is a concept that seems absolutely foreign to the Conservative Party, who always, you see their backbenchers just jump up with whistling and, and dancing every time they can come up with some extreme case of a criminal activity that will allow them as a cover to undermine all manner of privacy rights, all manner of uh, basic citizen rights, and they've done it time and time again. And yet the Supreme Court has said no. The test of law in this country is what is reasonable, versus unreasonable. And so what is reasonable is that if the law knows that someone's at risk and they need to get that information immediately, it is reasonable to go for the warrantless wiretap, to gather that information without the judge's warrant. That can then be obtained later. What is unreasonable is to do that without any oversight mechanism. So Bill 184.4 will clarify, Mr. Speaker, because it defines, and this is a very important thing, again, in dealing with C-12 and C-30, it defines who is eligible, the police. How is it to be used? It's to be used under specific circumstances. And why? Why, Mr. Speaker, is to protect the rights of citizens balanced off against the right to bring safety to people who are perhaps under threat from criminal activity. So the definition of how 
this breach of the law would be allowed is, is crucial to C-55. Now, Mr. Speaker, as I was saying, when we look at Bill C-30, which was the bill that this was supposed to be part of, there is, there is none of these definitions, the who, the how, and the why. In fact, it is so broad that the privacy commissioners from across Canada in unprecedented uh, response to the government wrote against this government's attempt to undermine the basic civil rights of Canadian citizens. Now, at the time, Mr. Speaker, the, the Conservative government, whenever they attempt to do something that they know won't pass a charter challenge, whenever they attempt to pull something that they know the Canadian public won't stand for, they, they use a boogeyman. And the Minister of Justice used perhaps the most uh, baseless attack that's ever been uttered in this House of Commons where he said that anybody who is concerned about the privacy rights, the individual rights of citizens in this country who dared raise a question to him were on the side of child pornographers. Uh, that was about as ugly as it can get. And Mr. Yeah. Speaker, of course, now we see that who's on the side of the child pornographers? Well, we have Mr. Tom Flanagan who said, well, it's a victimless crime. And we see the right-wing media who are all concerned about Mr. Tom Flanagan, a very famous, very rich right-wing white man. And it was his rights that we're now being told were somehow trampled upon. I read one reporter who said that he thought it was showed those fundamental shallowness of Canadians, that they were outraged that Mr. Flanagan was defending the rights of child pornographers. But that was the kind of language that was being used by this minister to cover up the fact that there were major flaws in Bill C-30. And if we tie it back to Bill C-55 in terms of the Supreme Court, the government must have known that none of their provisions would have passed a charter challenge because they didn't meet the basic standards of jurisprudence. So let's look at the lack of the how, the where, and the why in terms of, or sorry, the, the who, the how, and the why in terms of C-30 compared to C-55. Under Bill C-30, which may be brought back by this government, we are not sure, under Section 34, it allows the government to designate an inspector to go into a telecom to demand information for being in compliance with Bill C-30. Now, the minister may designate as inspectors it's his choice, but there's no definition of what those inspectors are. Are they police? Are they uh, private security? Are they political staffers? We don't know. It allowed the extraordinary ability of the minister to appoint inspectors. And under Section 34.4, that they would be allowed to go into t public telecoms to gather information on private citizens. Mr. Speaker, that was clearly something that would never pass a charter challenge. Whereas in C-55, we see they've defined the right to ask for warrantless information to the police, which is the proper place where it should be, to the police. We should know who's able to gather that information on us. Well, Mr. Speaker, what they wanted to do under Bill C-30, under warrantless access, to gather the subscriber information on the data use of anybody who had a cell phone, anybody with an ISP address, which pretty much would mean 95, 96% of the Canadian public that unspecified persons could gather that information. Now, the Privacy Commissioners of Canada spoke out against this because they said, Mr. Speaker, contrary to the Conservative Party claims, it had nothing to do with saying, well, this is just like a phone book. Um, and Kavukian said that this was one of the most invasive threats to our privacy and freedom that I have ever encountered. Wow. She said that demand, being able to t demand and being forced to turn over this information, she said it would the consumer name and address information ties us to our entire digital life. It's not like a stationary street address. Therefore, subscriber information is far from the modern-day equivalent of a publicly available phone book. Rather, it is a key to much wider, sensitive subset of information. Interesting. So that's what they wanted to be able to gather. Now, the, the abuse of privacy rights didn't end there, Mr. Speaker. Under Bill C-30, what they'd wanted also to do is to force telecoms to basically build in back-channel spy communication. So as they expanded their networks, uh, they would have to build in the monitoring system to be able to keep track of any citizen that the government felt they should be able to look at at any time. 
again, without any oversight, without citizens knowing that they would be spied upon. Uh, Anne Kavuki, and again, the Privacy Commissioner of Ontario, said that what they were in fact doing, they perhaps didn't realize it, but they were creating a hacker's paradise. Whoa. Because if you allow these uh, wormholes throughout the telecom system to allow police to spy on it, well, certainly the hackers, who are usually about three steps ahead of, of everybody else on this, uh, and, and we see massive international gangs using sophisticated cyber hacking, that they would be able to benefit from this probably much more than uh, police and security services. So that, again, in terms of the how, when you compare it to C-55, which limits the ability to get a warrantless wiretap based on the... the the possibility of a threat to a person that would then have to have oversight mechanisms afterwards, that reports have to be published, that we would have to know, and it would have to be reported to Parliament, how these warrantless wiretaps would, are being used. Under the how in, in C-55, it defines and protects this breach of citizens' private rights, whereas under Bill C-30, they kicked the door down and threw out all the basic rights of the private, of the individual citizen. Now, of course, Mr. Speaker, we know the Bill C-30 responded in a massive and a very exciting, positive response from the public, a backlash who said, in Canada, we demand that our privacy rights be protected, that they are they still defined under the rule of law in this country. And it was an unprecedented backlash against the government. Uh, the Minister of Justice has been pretty much hiding under his desk publicly ever since. And I think that that's a good sign that we have an engaged citizenry here. And engaged citizenry know that the difference between what is reasonable and unreasonable, again, going to C-55 where the government has limited that they will be able to gather the information under the reasonableness of protecting an individual who's facing threat against the unreasonableness of going away with all manner of private uh, rights, privacy rights whatsoever. And in this manner, I'd say, Mr. Speaker, Canadian public, much more than this government, because this government has very little respect for privacy rights of Canadians, but the Canadian public are in the foremost, I think, across the world of standing up for the rights because we see other democracies where the privacy rights in the digital age, in the age of big data, in the age of uh, CCTV cameras, that other citizens are steadily, steadily, steadily having those rights eroded, whereas in Canada we want to maintain those rights. Now, I guess, Mr. Speaker, in terms of the other piece of legislation to compare C-55 to is C-12, where we see the government again showing no respect for the privacy rights of Canadians. There's no understanding of the importance of privacy rights. We certainly saw that, Mr. Speaker, with the massive data losses on private uh, information, financial information on over 500,000 Canadians at HRSD. We've seen there's other been data breaches. We saw the government's cavalier attitude that rather than warning citizens that their data, their personal financial data may have been breached, the government's only desire was to protect the minister and they kept it quiet. Shame. They kept it quiet for two months, Mr. Speaker. Shame. There could have been any manner of international gangs who had that data who were going after people's credit and creating massive widespread fraud because that's what happens if you do not alert the public. Now, we see under Bill C-12, Mr. Speaker, that this government is actually going to change the threshold for, for private in business in terms of what is the reporting mechanisms for when these uh, privacy breaches happen. And this is very important, Mr. Speaker, in terms of defining how we protect the rights of citizens. Under the changes that the government's bringing on C-12, a private company that has your data, it could be the bank, it could be a Sony PlayStation, it could be uh, all manner of uh, online transactions, that they would only have to report the breach to the Privacy Commissioner if they thought there was a significant risk of harm. Well, significant, Mr. Speaker, that's an extremely high bar to set. Meanwhile, all manner of abuse could happen underneath it. And if you're a private business, the idea of going public with the fact that you may have lost 100,000 or 200,000 or 500,000 um, visa card information or personal data information, you're going to be very wary about doing it because it affects your basic uh, business model online. And everything, Mr. Speaker, now is done online. But what we see this government is saying to private business, okay, don't worry if it's a privacy breach, only report it if it's significant harm. Mr. Speaker, that completely fails the basic test and the understanding of the importance of privacy rights in this country. We believe, Mr. Speaker, that there has to be a very clear rule in place that if your privacy, if a company fears they've been hacked, 
if there's a possibility that privacy data has been breached, that it is reported to the Privacy Commissioner. Yeah. The Privacy Commissioner has such uh, an extraordinary role to play in protecting and, and being able to actually review the evidence and then deciding whether uh, action must be taken. But we see that, again, the government is undermining the role of the Privacy Commissioner. And we have to ask why, as, as more and more and more Canadians do their businesses online, as our financial uh, transactions occur online, the last thing we'd want to do is create a hacker's paradise in Canada, which Ann Kavukian had spoken about, the threat of a hacker's paradise, while the rest of the world is actually moving further ahead of us. Mr. Speaker, it's, it's extraordinary that Canada was once seen as the world leader in privacy data. Our privacy commissioner is seen as, a, uh, as, as definitely a world leader. But our legislation is falling further and further behind where the Europeans are going, where the Americans are going. And as our privacy commissioner is asking for the tools to be able to update, to deal with the cyber threats, to deal with the protection of personal information in the big age of big data, this government is actually undermining the legislation. Now, Mr. Speaker, how does that relate to Bill C-55? I'm glad you asked. Um, because there's direct connections in the language between Bill C-12, Bill C-30, and what we've seen in Bill C-55. Now, under Bill C-12, it allow organizations, companies, including telecommunications companies, to disclose personal information to government institutions, perhaps the police, perhaps not, without the knowledge and consent of the individual for performing policing services. And they do not define, and this is under Clause 6.6, .6, they don't have no definition of what policing services are. So again, it's the language of Bill C-30, the lawful access, the online snooping language, that allows some undefined security uh, individual or force to obtain information on private individuals from telecommunications without defining who is eligible to gather that information, whereas C-55 has limited it to the police. So it's very clear. We have very clear, and I, I agree with my, my, my colleague on the Conservative side, and I'm asking him, we're going to need to certainly bring C-12 to the same standard where we define who is eligible to ask that information, because without having done that, we're going to end up going before the courts again. So if we define it's the right of the police to ask for that information, well, then that meets the test that is laid out in Bill C-55, but it doesn't meet that test in C-12 right now, Mr. Speaker. And the issue is there is no oversight mechanism in Bill C-12 to ensure that if they do ask for this uh, subscriber information, if they do ask for this ISP information on individual users, there's no mechanisms under Bill C-12 for reporting that that's happening, and that fails the test of Bill C-55. So it's, it's clear, Mr. Speaker, that what the government had been attempting to do was to take Bill C-30, this was their desire to be able to snoop on as many people as often as they wanted, wherever they wanted, however they wanted, and they had to build in a number of other subsets and other legislation to make that operable and Bill C-12, which is changes to the Privacy Protection Act, was, would certainly allow them to do that. But being that we've had the public backlash on C-30 and being that we now have defined Bill C-55 very clearly, again, the who, the how, and the why that this is being allowed, that we need to clarify the same mechanisms under Bill C-12. So, Mr. Speaker, we see that this government is... They're on the straight and narrow right now. It's, they didn't want to come there. They were drag kicking and screaming. And, and it's our job to make sure they stay on the straight and narrow. We want to work with them. I mean, it, it's hard for them. And, and we'll do our part to keep them on the straight and narrow. You know, we'll, we will do that 12-step well, that program of accountability. And I want to work with my colleagues on that. But I have to say, they just keep sliding off that wagon, Mr. Speaker. They want to go after personal freedoms. They want to go after individuals. They want to do that spying thing. And it's just, they can't do it because we have the rule of law in this country so we're saying come work with us learn from your colleagues who might have a little more experience in some of these matters bill c-55 certainly the supreme court has laid down the test that has to be met now that c-55 is in place the problems with bill c-12 are too clear to ignore
then, Mr. Speaker, then what we need to do from Bill C-12 is to make sure that Bill C-30 will never come back and that the online snooping provisions of this government will not come back. I'm more than willing to take any manner of questions from my colleagues, Mr. Speaker. Here, here.